In this session, we'll take the subassembly part that we reviewed in part one and use it to add driveways to a corridor model. Note that this session represents part two of a three-part series. Now I've got a drawing open on screen, and this drawing includes some Sybil data. Let's take a look. Right here, I've got an alignment called First Street. I also have an existing ground surface called EG. If I pan the drawing over, you can see that I've extracted a surface profile for First Street. I have also created a finished grade profile. At this point, I'm ready to create an assembly. We'll do that here on the Home tab. In the Create Design panel, I'll click the Assembly button, and I'll choose Create Assembly. We'll call the assembly First Street. For type, I'll choose Undivided Crowned Road, and I'll click OK. I will then click to place the assembly in the drawing. Now let's add some lanes. We'll do that by selecting the assembly, and I'll choose Tool Palette from the ribbon. From here, I'll select the Lanes tab, and I'm going to select the Lane Super Elevation AOR. And I'll click the assembly twice to put a lane on the left and right side, and I'll press Escape. Then I'll come down and choose the Custom tab. Here we can see the subassembly that we looked at in the previous session. I'll click to select this, and then I will drop one on the right side and the left. And I'll press Escape. I can then close up the tool palette. Finally, I'd like to increase the size of the boulevard. I'll do that by selecting each of these parts. And then in the Properties palette, I'll drag down and we'll change the boulevard width from 5 feet to 10 feet. And I'll press Enter. OK, let's build a corridor. I'm going to pan the drawing up. We'll make the corridor by clicking the Corridor button. I'll click Corridor, and I'm going to call the corridor First Street. We'll build it from the First Street alignment using the First Street finished grade profile, using the First Street assembly. I don't have any surface targets at this point. I'll come down and click OK. And then since this alignment has some curves, I'm going to click the Frequency Ellipsis button, and I'd like to tighten up the assembly insertions to every 10 feet in the horizontal and vertical curves. I'll click OK and OK. Then we'll rebuild the corridor. I'll back up and take a look. At this point, my corridor is defined using a plottable code set style, so it's just displaying the feature lines. Let's flip it over to a working style. I'll do that by selecting it. And in the Properties palette, I'll change the code set style to Working. This style displays the assembly insertions. I'll press Escape when finished. Let's do one more thing. I'd like to create a top surface. I'll do that by selecting the corridor, and I'll choose Corridor Surfaces from the ribbon. I'd like to create a new surface, and we will call this surface First Street Top. I'd like to build the surface from top links. We'll add those. I'm going to add those as break lines. I'm going to use the Top Links Overhang Correction, and then I'll click the Boundaries tab. I'll right-click, and we'll add the Corridor Extents as the outer boundary. I'll click OK. We'll rebuild the corridor, and I'll press Escape again. So we can see that proposed surface. Let's take a closer look. I'll select it, and we'll bring up the Object Viewer. And I'll orbit this, and as I spin this around, we can see the geometry, we can see the crown of the road there, we can see the definition of the curb, and then we've got the sidewalk here to the outside. Let's close this up. I will zoom in. At this point, I'd like to create some driveway geometry. Now, I could draw that manually, or to make things a little bit faster, I'm going to insert a block. I'll type Insert, and then I've got a block here called Left Driveway. It's intended for the left side of the corridor. I've consequently got one for the right side as well. We'll look at that in a little bit. I'm going to insert this by specifying the insertion point and the rotation. I'll click OK. You can see I'm holding that geometry at my cursor. I'm going to place this nearest, and I'll choose the sidewalk. I can then rotate this perpendicular to the center of the road. Now, I could have used a dynamic block for this as well. Really, the sky's the limit to create this geometry. Now that it's in here, I don't need it to be a block anymore, so I'm going to explode it. I'll click the Explode button, select the block, and press Enter. And then let's take a closer look at what we have. I have a polyline here. Notice the layer that it's sitting on. It's called Left Driveway Aprons. I'm going to use the layer to my advantage later when I'm selecting targets. This polyline represents the path that the driveway object will target to create the shape of the apron. It will pull away from the curb and gutter until it meets the sidewalk, and then it will come back again to rejoin the curb. I have another entity here. This polyline is designed to be the target for my curb lowering. You can see it's on a layer called Left Curb Lowerings. These two additional objects are not necessary for targets. I'm just using these to kind of define the flange geometry here. Now that I have my target geometry, let's push this up to match the top surface. I'll do that by selecting the Modify tab, and then I'll come down to the Edit Elevations panel, and I'll choose Elevations from Surface. 
I'd like to pull the elevations from the top surface. We're going to insert intermediate grade breakpoints, and I'll click OK. I will then select both of my polylines, and I'll press Enter. If I hover, you can see these were converted into 3D polylines, and now their geometry matches that top surface. Just for a second, I'm going to select these, and then I'll come down and click the Isolate button, and I'll choose Isolate Objects, so they're the only thing that we see on screen. I will then hold the Shift key in the mouse wheel, and I'll orbit this up, and then I'll zoom in. Now this geometry is going to define the curb lowering, so I need to lower it. I'll do that by selecting it, and then I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'll click on each of these interior grips. When I'm finished, I'll take my finger off the Shift key, and then I'll click one of the grips. I'll tap F8 to lock my ortho, and then I will pull this straight down 0.5 feet, and I'll press Enter. I'll press Escape when finished, and if I orbit this a little bit, you can kind of see the geometry there in 3D. I will then type Plan and hit Enter twice. This takes me back to a top view. Let's zoom out, and then we'll go back to the Isolate button, and I'll end Object Isolation. At this point, all I have to do is add this geometry as targets to my corridor. I'll do that by selecting the corridor, and I'll come up and choose Edit Targets. I will then click inside the region I'd like to edit. From here, I can see all of the objects in my assembly that support targets. As far as width is concerned, we have some on the right and left side. I'm dealing with the left side currently. On that side, I have my driveway horizontal target. I'm going to assign it by layer, and I'll choose my left driveway aprons. I'll click OK and OK. So that is going to take care of this geometry as a horizontal target to pull out my driveway as it moves through. Now I want it to be managed vertically as well, so let's open up the elevational targets. And here on the left side, under Driveway Vertical, I'll select that by layer, and I'm going to use the same layer. I'll click OK and OK. And then for Curb Height on the left side, let's assign that target. We'll do it by layer. I'll choose the left side Curb Lowerings. I'll click OK and OK and OK. I will then press Enter to rebuild the corridor. Let's press Escape, and then we'll select the surface first. I'll go to Object Viewer. Let's pan this over, and I'll orbit it up. And right there, we can see the driveway. Let's close this up, and we'll take a look at it in the Section Editor. I'm going to select the corridor by clicking on the Assembly Insertion right before the driveway. I will then come up and choose Section Editor. From here, I will click in the Plan View, and let's zoom in on the driveway area. And as long as I'm here, I really don't need these extra red lines that came along from the block. Let's delete those. And then in the section view, let's zoom in on the left side, and then I'm going to click Zoom to an offset and elevation to kind of lock this view on screen. Now I can click Next. This jumps to the assembly insertion right before the driveway. Let me click again. There you can see how the driveway is coming out as the curb is lowering. Here we are matching up with the sidewalk. There we're in the driveway, driveway, and now we can see the driveway's going away, and it goes back to standard curb with the 2% slope here in the boulevard. Let me back through. You can see the driveway come in, and then go away. Let's click Close. I'll back up, and we'll add another driveway. Let's drop one on the other side. I'm going to type Insert, and I've got a block called Right Driveway. We'll insert it using the same settings. I'll click OK. I'm holding that from my cursor. I'm going to place this nearest. And I'll pick a point here. I'd like to place this perpendicular to my alignment. So I've got a little bit of overlap going on with the driveways here. Now that it's been placed, we'll explode it. I'll go back to the Home tab and I'll click Explode. And I'll select this and press Enter. Now we know we don't need these objects. Let me select those and I'll delete them. Let's push this geometry up to match the top surface. Once again, we'll go back to the Modify tab. Here under Edit Elevations, I'll choose Elevations from Surface. I'll click OK. I will select this target and this one, and I'll press Enter. I will then select both of these. I'll come down and choose Isolate, and I'll isolate those objects. We'll orbit this around, and then I will select my lowering target. I'll hold my Shift key, and I'll click each of these interior grips. I will then take my finger off the Shift key and click one of the grips again, and I'll pull this straight down a half a foot. I'll press Escape. Let's orbit this. You can see the geometry looks a little different. One of the reasons why I'm using a right side driveway is because these objects are now being placed on a right side layer. Let's type Plan. I'll hit Enter twice to go back to a top view. I will then go back to the Isolate button and we'll end Object Isolation. And then we will add these entities as targets to our corridor. I'll select the corridor. I'll choose Edit Targets. 
and I'm going to click inside my region. And then here on the right side, I'm going to take the driveway horizontal target. I'm going to assign that by layer. I'll choose the right side driveway aprons. I'll click OK and OK. And then from an elevational perspective, I want the driveway vertical assigned by layer. We'll use the right side driveway apron. I'll click OK and OK. And then to push the curb down in that area, we'll take the curb height target, select by layer, and we'll use the right side curb lowering geometry. I'll click OK and OK and OK. I'll press Enter to rebuild the corridor, and I'll press Escape. Let's select the surface again. I'll go to Object Viewer. We'll kind of center this on screen. And as I orbit that up, we can see both of those driveways. So by leveraging this technique, along with a custom part, I'm able to add driveways to a corridor model using minimal effort. I should mention again that this workflow isn't meant to be the answer for every type of driveway. I'm hoping that by showing you this technique, it may give you some ideas that help you with your own driveway modeling needs. Now that we've seen how easy it is to add driveways along a straight section of roadway, let's try using this workflow to apply a driveway here in the curve. We'll experiment with that workflow in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.